Hi, and welcome to Apricot. Today we're going to look at a high-level overview of how to get around the system. First of all, you may be asking, why should I use Apricot? The Apricot system allows you to track what matters. It's one system that manages whatever information you and your staff, clients, and funders need. It allows you to collaborate with ease. It's one place that puts shared histories, updates, reports, and actions at everyone's finger fingertips. And you can prove every impact. It's one purpose that unites people, programs, and measures to drive an even bigger difference. So today we're going to look at which browsers you should use when accessing Apricot, how to log into the Apricot system, basic navigation within Apricot, bulletins, how to view those and what they can do for you, working with records. We'll talk about the different records and we'll show you um, all of the functionality within those, and reports. We'll look at reports and how to add filters and how to view them in your Apricot system. So let's talk first about, about browsers. Which browser should I use to access Apricot, you may be asking. Well, we recommend using Google Chrome. Google Chrome is what our team here at uh, Community Tech uses. And we definitely recommend you'll have the best experience accessing Apricot through Google Chrome. You can also use Firefox if you like. But we definitely don't recommend using Internet Explorer if you can avoid it. If your organization allows you or forces you to use Microsoft Internet Explorer, I definitely recommend making sure that you're running the latest version. The same with Google Chrome and Firefox as well. Let's go ahead and get started now. Hi, now we're at communitytech.net and to log into Apricot, we'll choose the customer login button here on the top right. Once I click that button, I'll be taken to the login screen. You'll notice up here that my URL has changed. I can easily bookmark this or add this to my favorites in my browser so that I can easily just go straight to this login page in the future. Um, you'll see that I have a server selector. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the US because that's where I am. And I'll enter my username. Your username is going to always be your email address. That way it's easy for you to remember. I'll enter my password. Now if I forget my password, I can always choose the log, uh, the forgot your password link here at the bottom of the screen. Once I click this, I'll receive an email that will allow me to reset my password. Here I am on the login screen. Now the first thing that we see is the masthead, the navigation masthead up here. You have a My Apricot tab, an Administrator tab, a Customer Care tab, and a Help Center tab. You also see my name and the name of my organization here. It'll also show that I'm logged in as an, as an administrator, which is why I have this administrator tab. Most users will not see the administrator tab. When you log in, you'll by default go to the My Apricot tab, which most users will have by default as well. When we go into the administrator tab, it allows us to do things like uh, create and edit forms, create and edit reports, look at records, set up certain access controls for certain users, set up bulletins, put things on the calendar if one exists in your organization, and look at shared files to upload and share them among your team. Now if I click on the customer care tab, it's going to allow me to submit a request. If I have any issues using the Apricot system, I can go here, click on the Customer Care tab, and be presented with this box that I fill out, and it'll be sent to our helpful support team. You also have access to the Help Center, which is just a knowledge base of information that allows you to learn how to use the Apricot system. You can see there's different sections here on how to use Apricot, which we're doing today, how to build reports, etc. If I click on the how to use Apricot and go to the training resources, 
There's actually a webinar schedule here that I can schedule for a live webinar. And I can search for something, such as how to change my password. I'm going to close this window and return to my main screen. Now, for the demo purposes today, we'll be working from the My Apricot tab. So I'm going to select uh, the My Apricot tab here in the masthead. Now, the next thing you'll see is any bulletins that we have set up that um, sh appear when you log in. Here we see that we have our company logo here. You can upload any logo that you want if you're an administrator. We also have sample bulletins. Bulletins can include things to communicate to users. So for example, you can include things like uh, news or, or information that your entire organization needs to, to see when they log into Apricot. You can also include things like uh, URLs, so you can actually direct them to another site if they need to read up on, on information. And you can also embed reports. So I'm going to collapse this bulletin and open this one, and you'll see that this, these are my reports. So if I want a certain amount of um, reports to appear to every user that logs into Apricot, um, they can, you can embed that as well. And I'll show you a little bit more about reports, but just know that you can build them into your bulletins so that all the users can see them when they log in. The next thing you'll see here is this collapsible tab here. And you can open and close this simply by clicking on it. What this does is this is where most people will work from. So you have things such as search records, you have your My Apricot tools, which include reports, bulletins, and shared files. But for now, let's go ahead and go into this, uh, this search record functionality. Now, these records here will show the tier ones of any files that or forums that you have set up. Now, the tier one and tier two um, setup in Apricot is kind of complex to understand at first, but it's the whole foundation of your Apricot system. So if you think of having a physical folder for your client, the tier ones would be something that would be like the face sheet that you would staple onto the folder. It's something that's consistent and wouldn't change very often, such as their name, um, the addre their address, and other personal information that generally stays static. The tier two would be something that it would be the form that would be inserted into their folder, right? So it would be something like an attendance sheet, uh, a report, um, a progress report, things that would just be inserted in their folder uh, that, wouldn't nece that would necessarily, that they would have more of them and it would change nearly every time um, you filed one out, you filled one out rather. So let's go ahead and click on this, uh, this tier one here. And what happens is we see a list of all of our tier ones that we have entered into the system. So these all are all of our clients, for example. They're all listed here. I only have nine in my example, but you would probably have, your organization would probably have hundreds or maybe even thousands. Um, you can see that there, there's different functionality here on the right side. I can do things like, uh, like ser uh, my search actions, they allow me to uh, create a new sample tier one. So I, if I choose this option, I can actually uh, get the new form here, through which I can fill out and save it, and that'll create me a new record. I can also clear search history, so if I have a search, which I'll show you how to in a second, um, we can actually clear that out. So let's say I want to search for someone, and I am want to search for someone's particular name. So I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, the drop-down here for search, and add the search field for name. Now I can type in my name and we'll see that only mine comes back. Now there are two different ways to open this person's record. If I click on the hyperlink, which is their name here in orange, it's going to take me to their profile. This allows me to edit their tier one record for the individual, user, uh, the individual person. Now, if I go back to search and click on the black text here, that's going to take me into the user's folder. So now I'm looking, if you think of this as a physical folder that I'm looking at, so I'm looking at this client's folder. Here is my quick view information, which I have set up on my forms, and that can be changed to 
what quick view information that you see when you go directly into their folder, you will also see their tier twos. So these are the forms that I would place inside the folder. You can see I have one evaluation and six activity records for this particular person. From their folder, I can do things like I can edit the tier one again by clicking on this edit functionality. I can go back to the search functionality and I can print records as well. If I wanted to create a new activity report for this person, I can hover over the actions and click create new. I can fill this activity report out. So let's say they, it would, they participated in activity yesterday and it was an event. I can go ahead and save that record. Go back to the users folder and we can see the most recent uh, event record here that I created. Now let's go back to the search functionality. I'll click on return to search and I'll see that my, uh, my search is saved. So what I want to do is I want to clear the search history. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this clear search history and then we'll see all of the user or all of the records back here um, in my records. What I can do now is you'll see that there's a create batch records report, uh, or not report, excuse me. There's a create batch records section here. There's a button that allows me to create a batch tier two. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button, which will bring me up the activities tier two. I'm going to go ahead and enter this event. Let's say it happened yesterday. and it was an in-person meeting. Then I'm gonna say, let me pick which tier ones that I wanna associate this activity with. So I'll click on this button here on the top right. And then it allows me to choose which folders I want to um, apply this tier two to. Basically doing it in bulk without having to add a new activity report to each individual person. Let's say Beth, both Beths were there, um, Sarah was there, Chad was there, Jacob was there, and Asher was there. You'll see as I click on um, remove or add, the person populates here in this record selected section. I simply close this box here, these save, and I can just save this, um, save this activity form and then you will see that the batch records were processed for these individual users. If I were to go into those individual people's files, I would see new activities report or activities form attached to those people. Now if I go back into the search functionality and I see my search here, one really cool thing that I can do is I can create a favorites list. So let's say that I have um, an event every Tuesday called Timeout Tuesday. And I know that certain people attend um, that, that event every Tuesday. So what I can do is I can create a favorites list um, here. Let's say I'm gonna create a new favorites list and let's call this Timeout Tuesday. Now, if I wanna create it globally to share it with all my users, I can share it by clicking on this global button. But for now, I'm the only one that really manages the Timeout Tuesday. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it um, as is. I'm gonna save this list and we'll see that the favorite list here is selected. Now, my search uh, criteria has changed a little bit and we'll see that there are now stores here in this column under the add column. What I can do now is add these people to this favorite list simply by clicking on the store icon here. And we'll see as I click on the store icon, it was just like the plus button before and it populates this favorite details box here. So as I'm adding these favorites, it's adding, um, it's adding them to my favorite list here. So let's say that's all of the people that attend my Timeout Tuesday. And now I'm going to go ahead and let's say I'm just back in the search functionality. And I want to, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create that batch record like I did previously. Let's say I want to create an attendance report 
for Timeout Tuesday. Let's say it happened this last Tuesday. It was an event. And now I want to apply it to all those people that I know that attend Timeout Tuesday. I'm going to choose from my favorite list and go to Timeout Tuesday. And now all of these people have been automatically selected for me. I can click on Save. And now the batch record was created for those favorites. Now one thing that I can do is I can also, we'll see that the evaluation, there's an associated evaluation section here um, that has a link to it. Let me go ahead and back, go back to my search functionality. I'm going to choose someone's file. I'm going to go into um, Beth's uh, Timeout Tuesday activity record. And now let's say that um, there was an evaluation that took place during the Timeout Tuesday. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to link the activity to the evaluation record. So she was evaluated on her attendance um, for Tuesday, and I'm going to link those two. Linking is great because linking allows you to link two uh, forms in Apricot that normally wouldn't be associated with each other. So you can link things like two tier twos to each other, um, two tier ones, or you could even link a tier two to a separate tier one that it didn't fall under. So we'll see in this associated evaluation, I simply click on add, and then I'm going to find Beth's evaluation. We'll see here's her evaluation here, and we'll see that the link was now added by indicated above. I'm going to close this window. It will show you that links will be added upon save. I can click on save. And now we'll see that the evaluation was attached to Beth's activity report. OK. Now let's go ahead and show you reports. So we'll see now we're in our we're back here under my apricots tab and we're in the search records section. Now I'm going to choose the my reports section. My reports, you'll see that there's a sample report section and there's two separate reports. If I open these or collapse or expand this uh, this triangle here, we'll see that there is information about my report here, who was created by when it was last modified, and who ran it last. If I hover over the actions section, I can do things like run the report, print it, which will give me a view that will easily be printable. I can export it, so I can export it to a CSV file, and I could uh, manipulate the data through Excel. And I could edit the report as well. If we look at the report list filters here, I can also, if I have a large number of reports, I can filter them by creation time, modification time, last run, and I can select a date range. Let's go ahead and run this, uh, this report here. I'm going to hover over the run and just click on it. Now we'll see that I have my first report here, and I can look at the data. If I hover over it, it'll show me the different percentages. And I can actually kind of expand that uh, the pie chart. I can also see uh, my data in different forms. So this is all the reports that I have built. Again, this presentation isn't going to cover a lot um, of how to build reports. There is a how to build reports webinar that I recommend going to if you're going to build reports. And there's even an advanced report builder, um, which there is a webinar as well for that. So here we are in our reports. And over here on the right, on report actions, we have the same functionality um, as we did before, before we ran the report. We can edit the report if we have administrative access. We can put this uh, report in print mode. So if I need to print this, I can do that right away. 
I can export the data again to CSV so I can manipulate the data. I can display it full screen. So if I'm going to present it to someone, I can do that here. I can also reset the filters. So once I add filters, I can uh, reset all the filters by clicking this. And I, re can, and I can return to the list of, of all the reports uh, simply by clicking this button and it'll take me back uh, to where I was before the report was run. So here we'll see that there are filters and a plus sign here on the, on the right side of the screen. Let me go ahead and click on add a filter and you'll see that I can select my filter that I want to add here. So, I mean, uh, that I can change. So let's say that we want to um, filter by, uh, by gender. And let's say uh, that the filter um, is going to be, we want to see all of the females. I'm going to apply this filter now by clicking on the Apply button. And we'll now see that the report has been filtered um, by female. So all I see is the female information. If I scroll down, this doesn't affect any of my other reports, only the one that I have the filter for. And again, um, I can go in and edit my filter, uh, change my filter if I want, um, and I can also add more filters. So I can say, let's say I only want to see um, those uh, that are listed as active and now I will see only females that are active. Now I can go in here and individually remove um, a filter or I can just click on this reset filters button that I showed you earlier and that will remove all of the filters and we'll see now um, my filter is back to where it was. Um, I can go into each uh, report and add the filter that I want uh, to see um, so that my data will change uh, depending on which report and which filter I have uh, selected. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back to the list of reports, or rather the My Apricot tab. And now I can click on uh, My Bulletins, which is the next section here in the collapsible window, and we'll see that we're taking basically back to where we are when we log in. Uh, when you click on My Bulletins, you will see uh, the list of bulletins that you can view. Um, administrators can set up different bulletins to do different things or to appear to certain individuals or groups of people within your organization. That can all be set up through the administrator. And we'll see these are my bulletins that I have uh, visible to me. Now, the last section here is the My Shared Files. If I click on the My Shared Files section, we'll see that we have the same filters that we've had before. We can sort by date, uh, size, things like that. We can open this shared files uh, section and we'll see that there's actually an Excel file here. Um, shared files can be used uh, to upload important documents for your team or organization. Um, they can include things like how-to forms, uh, reference documents, HIPAA compliance, information, anything that you need to share across your team. Um, it allows you to uh, hover over the action, uh, action button, you can download the, the document um, and, uh, and view it uh, directly on your computer. Uh, if you open the document up, you can see uh, information uh, related to that document, such as the size, uh, who uploaded it, and when it was last modified. And so that concludes the webinar on how to use Apricot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on my Apricot and leave it uh, where our default location is. You remember, you can always see uh, where, which webinars are coming up by clicking on the Help Center and going into the individual section that you want to learn more about. The webinars are scheduled weekly and are available there. If you have any problems using Apricot, you can also click on the customer care tab and send a support ticket to the support team. So thanks, today. thanks for today and have a great one.